G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today I want to talk about this thing. Um, I'm not going to go into whether I like it or hate it, because it really doesn't matter. What I think is interesting about this is it's another example of a device that doesn't seem, in my opinion, to fit the aesthetic of the faction as established. Now, what you do and don't like is, of course, subjective. Something can be objectively bad, but you can still like it. I like a lot of movies like uh, Samurai Cops, a great example. Uh, anyone who watched that movie will go, oh, oh, this is bad, but it's so bad it's good. You know, same with something like Troll 2 uh, or the movie Elves. These are all films I love, by the way. Uh, but, you know, they're objectively bad films. Now, I can look at something like this, and I'm like, hmm, objectively, I don't think this fits the faction. That doesn't mean I dislike it. I just think it's misplaced, uh, at least as an Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle. Perhaps if it was some sort of rogue trader vehicle, uh, inquisitorial relic, I don't know, something like that, I think it would work really well. Uh, I think the design is relatively sound. But as a Mechanicum vehicle, it doesn't work for me. Today, I want to go through a few different Mechanicum units, compare them, contrast them, and say what I think. So, first things first. Here is the Mechanicum available on the Games Workshop website. So, alright, let's start with something like the Dune Crawler. The Onager Dune Crawler looks like an Imperial vehicle. Yes, it has the walking legs, but essentially the uh, actual canopy on it looks very similar to a Sentinel, which is a very established Imperial vehicle. And of course, it has that Imperial aesthetic because of it. It has the legs, but it has the same sort of trim on the legs. Uh, as, say, an Imperial Knight. And I'll open the uh, Sidonian Dragoon as well. So yeah, as you look at the legs, you see the sort of golden trim with the pointy arrow on it is very similar to the same pointy arrow and trim that you see on the Imperial Knights. So there's a cross flow of aesthetic right there. Things look similar. When you look at the actual war gear it's armed with, yeah, it has some stubbers and such, but the stubber is just a single one on top of the canopy on a pintle mount for the crew to use in vehicle self-defense, that sort of thing. And the knight has a stubber, just a single one coming out the left side of the chest and another one on the battle cannon barrel. If we look at this Mechanicum uh, walker over here, the Dragoon, same sort of thing, same trim style, uh, the same sort of legs, feet, pistons going on as with the other Mechanicum units. So. So far, everything sort of syncs up. Uh, the Knight Armages I should bring up. I'll bring them up later. Uh, but they have the same look as well. So, so far, clearly Imperial vehicles. Now, what makes them Imperial? Well, for anyone who looks an Imperial vehicle, they're very blocky for a start. Uh, smooth lines are not what they're really known for. Uh, the Imperial Knights, I guess, are a slight deviation from this in that they do have a lot of smooth panels, but of course they are large and over the top and almost like a giant space marine with the large pauldrons, the numerous heraldry. Uh, but the very blunt, crude nature of the weaponry is noticeably Imperial. It's not crude enough to be orcs, but it's definitely not refined enough to be something like the Eldar or the Necrons, that sort of thing. So, unmistakable. Also, unlike, say, Chaos, a lot of clear, clean lines. There's not gold trim to sort of the nth degree, as it were. Uh, there's not spikes all over it. There's not scrawled images to the gods. There's no like, corruption or breakdown, like pustules forming on the surface or tentacles sprouting from things. So all of this works really well. Okay, cool. These look like Mechanicum units. So we've sort of established now what the baseline should be for our Mechanicum forces. Now, let's look at this vehicle. It's not blocky, it's rounded. Now, that's bearable. It's an aircraft, after all. They need some sort of aerodynamic capabilities. 
that said, this is the universe where the Stormbird, Thunderhawk, Storm Raven, Storm Eagle, uh, Fire Raptor, Storm Talon all exist. And these flyers are all built like bricks. Uh, okay. Doesn't quite fit the aesthetic there for an Imperial Flyer now, does it? But, is that a bad thing? Well, no. But I think what's letting it down in this regard is the wings. And whilst it's cool to have a Leonardo da Vinci inspired design here, uh, again, it's not really the right place for it, I don't think. Because the wings in that look cool, they look almost like uh, Eldar or Dark Eldar sails on their different vehicles they'll have. Uh, but what would suit this Ornithopter better would be a large pair of rotors. Maybe similar but different to something like a, an Osprey, a US military vehicle. Not these flappy wings, which doesn't work for I don't think it works for anyone as a mechanical view. I think a lot of people are looking at this and going, this would look great in something like an Inquisitorial Warband or as a sort of niche interesting unit that I could have in my force, but not necessarily something that you would look at and say, this just reeks of Mechanicum to me. And again, it's the little things. It, it doesn't have that squared off nature, I think is the biggest aspect to the problem. Uh, let's look at Forge World then. And their Mechanicum units. So, the vehicles. Let's just look at some tanks and, well, okay, well, the Ordinatus over here. Oh, the Arvis, that's a good, that's a great example, actually. <clears throat> okay, so the Ordinatus Illator. What do you notice when you look at the Ordinatus or when you look at the Krios? These tanks are skeletal in nature. They have the same sort of style of gold trim with that little pointy arrow, uh, arrowhead formation on the trim, uh, and yes, skeletal frames. It's almost like a wrought iron framework, like an old bridge, like the Sydney Harbour Bridge in Australia. Um, like it's just been riveted together, and it's actually force fields that are doing all the work to keep the tank protected as opposed to traditional armour. And you see this on the Ordinata Silator, which looks almost like a couple of Krios tanks working together. Uh, it's all big framework for the large gun, whereas if it was a marine tank, it'd be something like a Macedon, it'd be a big slab-sided hulk of things. Uh, that's the aesthetic. Even on something like the Karaknos here, it's not as skeletal, but you can still see big holes through the sides of the hull. And of course, it has that shock, pr uh, shock prow at the front of the vehicle. And uh, yes, whilst it does have a smoothed off sort of dome-like uh, front end on the vehicle, compare the smoothed off dome-like front end to the uh, Ornithopter, and you'll see that <laughs> they're just two very different designs. I think if the Ornithopter had borrowed this front end with the where the brass is and the different silver trim around it and maybe had it on the underside of the cockpit that would be a great visual representation uh harky back to it maybe some conduit but this is clearly a very different style of vehicle i mean you couldn't look at the karaknos here which is a nice looking tank although a bit middling in rules and then look at this and say they are from the same faction or that they're even from the same race Whereas if you look at this vehicle, this vehicle, this vehicle, they all work together. They look right. The Arvis Lighter, uh, another classic Imperial vehicle, as you can see, very blocky, very squared off. If you had the hull like this, for example, and replaced the jet turbines on either side with some sort of large vertical takeoff prop fan, this would make a great looking uh, plastic flyer, as opposed to this which looks like the love child of an early model hind um <laughs> not their not their greatest model let's face it uh then look at their actual flying units so obviously the lightning strike fighter let's close the pages i don't need here so the lightning strike fighter again hard edges even though it's got to be supersonic, it's got to be atmosphere and space 
are compliant, the aerodynamics of the vehicle, you still see these squared off edges. It's unmistakably imperial. And then let's look at something like the Volterax, which is the Mechanicum uh, Flying Monstrous Creature of 30k. Now, a little note to people, this thing is a lot bigger than you think. This is not like a little bloat drone or something like that from 40k. That base there is the same size base that the Onagon Dune Crawler is on. This <laughs> giant bug, uh, give you some idea, there's a marine next to it. It's huge. It's bigger than a Dreadnought. Much bigger than a Dreadnought, in fact. It's bigger than a Rhino. Uh, and solid chunk of resin it is. But this sort of styling, it's smooth all over the hull. It has these little protrusions uh, on the sides that hold the Havoc launches. It's got its main gun and those creepy eye lenses and little tendrils at the front. And it's got the fans on the sides. Similar sort of style of little vertical thrust fans as the Hunter Killers in the Terminator series. I'm a big fan of the future Hunter Killer designs in that. If you took a larger or rotor version of these engines, instead of being a, a turbine, but actually a big rotor with like three blades or something in it, fully enclosed, uh, like you see on a lot of drones, and you put that onto the ornithopter, I think it would suit it much, much better. Uh, but again, aesthetically, you can't look at that and this and say they look like they're from the same faction. They just look too different. Uh, this vehicle has none of the trim that other Mechanicum vehicles do. Every Mechanicum vehicle has some form of trim on it. It has that little gold band that runs around the edges with the little pointy arrow shapes, just like on the kneecaps of the Knights and the shins of the Knights and the legs of the Dune Crawler. They all carried that same design aesthetic. Now again, I'm not saying this looks bad. I think this is actually a pretty cool looking design. I just don't think it's the right design for this faction. And it's really a point I have to stress here. Uh, even the little antenna on top, uh, they're not blocky antenna like they are on other vehicles where they just sort of stick out of big square things on the hull. These are very small little antennae and they're, they're on little ball joints of some description. Uh, it just looks very simple. And that's a real shame because I think something like the Volterax is, is beautiful. This to me really appeals. Uh, whereas the Da Vinci design here, uh, I could see some really great 28mm scale Inquisitor conversions done with the vehicle. Uh, I do think that the little ball uh, in the side door uh, needs to be changed. It doesn't look good at all. <laughs> uh, in fact, it looks atrocious and it would have a terrible field of fire. It's interesting that it has the vertically dropped bombs, the little finnets, uh, hanging from underneath, or that it can have that sort of twin stubber. I don't know what the trend is that Games Workshop has at the moment, the love that they have for stubbers. Stop putting them on everything, please. Please, Games Workshop. People are over the fucking stubbers, especially on Primaris Marines, which makes very little sense. They should be armed with some sort of bolt version of the weapon on their pintles. Just a little side rant. Uh, if I quickly go into the Horus Heresy section, I know, shocking. Uh, unit type? Mm, no, vehicles. I want to try and find all the flyers, aircraft. So, with the exception of Custode vehicles, which are styled like all Custode equipment, as you can see, all the Imperial vehicles here are very blocky, square. Some of these, like the Storm Eagle, are used by the Mechanicum as well. But they fit in. The Arvis Lighter, another Mechanicum vehicle, Voss Lightning. The Thunderbolt, the Xiphon. Thunderhawk, Sokar Stormbird, Fire Raptor, all very blocky square vehicles. The Custode vehicles, of course, are the exception to the rule. But again, they're the exact same aesthetic as the Custode tanks. Uh, they look like they belong in that faction. If I open up uh, the Custode's list, so Armies of the Imperium, Legio Custode, and you look at all their vehicles, the Cladius Grav Tank. Oh yeah, it looks like the 
uh, wing pylons of the Orion. Or maybe the Pallas Grav Tank, the Coronas Grav Carrier. The jet bikes, they all look the same, these vehicles. The Dreadnoughts have the same styling. The Custodes as a faction are visually perfect. They look just right. Uh, it's hard to shit on the designs except for Veldor. <laughs> it's just so over the top. Uh, that is not something I can say about this. I do not look at this vehicle. If it wasn't for the colours on the vehicle, you would not pick it as belonging to this faction. Because everything else in it is blocky and squared off. Look at the sharp angles on the Cataphon breaches. Look at the uh, Electro Priest or the Skatari, how they're covered in uh, very blocky, jagged, spiky uh, appendages thanks to their bionics or thanks to the augmentations on the external surface of their skin. Nothing here is sleek or bulbous, rounded off. Until you get to something like the Dune Rider and the Disintegrator, which I think we can universally agree are not great designs. Uh, in fact, they look horrid when you compare something like this to the designs of 30k. Um, it's like they had to be as different as possible. Uh, but, but these two tanks as well fall into the same problem of not suiting the faction. If you took away the coat of paint, they wouldn't look right. But to their credit, at least the turrets on them are blocky and squared off and have those same features. The hulls of the vehicles, apart from the little hovercraft grav platform at the base, are squared off and blocky. And again, that's at least an imperial thing they've got going on there. Whereas this vehicle, none of that. I don't know if there's a square edge on it. Even the doors are rounded off to some extent. So again, not a terrible design maybe doesn't suit the faction. And it's not the first time this sort of thing has happened. There are many other vehicles like this in 30k and 40k, and uh, it's just something I want to bring up because visual design is something that I'm very into, obviously with an engineering background, that uh, you want to see things that work together, a certain harmony of design, that kind of thing. Uh, architects will tell you a lot about this, trying to make a building fit into its surrounds. Uh, if it's a brand new building going to an old neighborhood, for example. Uh, any faction should have this. If you look at any army across the board, 40k, 30k, Age of Sigma, whatever, you should be able to look at the models in that and just know at a glance that they're pretty much the same faction, uh, even if they're just in grayscale. With this, though, you can't do that. If it wasn't for the Mechanicum symbol uh, symbols on it symbology and for the uh paint job you wouldn't pick it as a mechanic vehicle which just a little interesting thing to note and i just want to talk today about the design itself again i think it's a nice design don't mistake honest critique for salt it's a nice design that with a different paint job maybe a few tweaks and minor conversions to it would be an absolutely fantastic rogue trader model or some sort of uh, weird human relic that's been dug up as like a one-off thing on another world but as a standard Mechanicum vehicle uh, it does not work it just does not fit the aesthetic that's been established and that's a bit of a shame but anyway I want to hear your thoughts and feedback and I'll uh, probably do this video as a preview as well. I did that with the last video I posted up where I watched it live alongside people on the channel and then I'm able to give my feedback to them and they can ask questions to me at the same time and if people do like that let me know in the comments below um, because I'll do it more in the future where I can sit there live with people and you can bounce what you think are my bad points off me right then and there and I can further explain myself or listen to your viewpoints uh, and maybe you can change my mind. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.